guys, Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. Happy to have you here, guys. Today, we're going to rank the top 15 rare, epic, and legendary champions inside the game here past the midway point, well past the midway point here in 2022. So a lot of good champions, over a thousand champions right now in the game. That's insane. Uh, there's a lot of really good champions. This is an impossible list to make. This is just the, the, the exercise, the mental exercise that I'm taking here is if I'm starting a fresh account and I just get to draft, the Plarium says, okay, Ash, you've done mediocre work for three and a half years now on YouTube. We're going to reward you with a brand new account. Pick 15 rares, epics, and legendaries. This would be my response. This would be my answer. You know, a long time ago, somebody told me the key to YouTube is just making content, making videos that you would genuinely click on. You would genuinely want to, you know, learn about or hear about or whatever you're doing on YouTube. Uh, and for me, I love ranking stuff. <laughs> you know, like everything in life. I got my top TV shows. I got my top movies, my top books, my top friends. Maybe not externally, but inside, you know, you kind of know. Even for the internet, it's... Pretty shocking. I like ranking stuff, so I like, I consume ranking type content. Anyway, let's start with the rare champions uh, today first here, guys. First, like really quickly, I'm gonna make this video quick, I promise. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on all these champions. Well, I'm sorry, I couldn't do that. Before all of that, uh, any good TV show recommendations? Speaking of TV shows, my number one of all time is Sopranos, by the way. Uh, I'm old, you know, I'm old. Uh, so guys, give me uh, a good recommendation. I just finished Trainwreck, Woodstock 99. If you're in like your 30s, 40s age range like me, you will definitely appreciate that documentary, three-part docuseries on Netflix. Let's get to the rare champions here. Guys, starting out with none other than Apothecary. Why not, right? Why not start with the obvious champions here? This was, believe it or not, kind of difficult as well to make the rare list. I thought the rares at least would be easy, and then I'd get into trouble with the epics and the legendaries. Uh, but he has a great two-turn heal. He's got increased speed and turn meter support, uh, defense and dungeons, great base stats. What more do you want from a champion, right? Next up is going to be Eris. Eris is a now kind of carved her way into being an important part on a lot of clan boss teams. She has increased speed with a random debuff removal from all allies on a three turn cooldown. She also counterattacks anytime an ally is attacked. I put her in a toxic set to get extra poison damage on the clan boss as well if you have any debuff spots open. And then the last high elf here is Reliquary Tender. Reliquary Tender is a cleanser. She's also a reviver. She also has continuous heal, decrease attack on her A1, albeit the weak version. That's a lot for a rare champion to have. You're going to hear me repeat this numerous times in today's video. But what we're really looking for in the champions that we consider, or I consider, the most valuable in the game is champions that can bring, you know, multiple of the things that I'm looking for for a well-balanced team all in one champion. Next up, we're going to go with another obvious here in uh, Cold Heart. I mean, Heart Cold Heart is the closest thing, in my opinion, to a legendary champion. Heart Seeker, full turn meter depletion, uh, millions of damage, four time hitter on her A1. Are you kidding me? I mean, they don't make rares like they made Cold Heart anymore, do they, guys? I mean, just an incredible, incredible champion. Uh, next up, guys, we have a, a champion who's right up there in the upper echelon as well, and it's Renegade. I mean, for the sacrificial ritual. For the sacrificial sacrifice. Can you read? Sacrificial ritual, not sacrificial, Ash. Decrease the cooldown of all allies goes by two turns. I mean, that doesn't sound like much, maybe to new players. I didn't appreciate her way back in the day. Uh, but boy, is it incredibly effective to get the other champions on your team to do more of what they do best, really, you know, in a nutshell. So just a tremendous champion, big, big fan. All right, next up is going to be... None other than Bellower. I mean, he's still the king of AoE attacks. His block active skills on his A1 on an AoE. He has such great control. Put him in a stun set, Fearsome Presence Mastery, 23% stun on every single attack. Uh, can be a campaign farmer. You can use him everywhere. Decrease speed, more control on a three-turn cooldown on his A2. Decrease defense, decrease attack as well on a four-turn on his A3 ability. So, I mean, Bellower is just a tremendous champion uh, overall inside the game. All right, next up is going to be Soulbound Bowyer. These are in no particular order, guys. I, I don't, hopefully I don't need to tell you that, but yeah, they're no particular order. Man, I love her because she has an AoE on the A1. Put her in a stun set and Soulbond has you covered. 
on her A3, full turn meter depletion a la Coltart, minus, you know, about a million damage or so, depending on who you're attacking, of course, but great for control. I use a ton of Soul Bond Bullier in my secret room teams in the end to end game, so you can definitely use her all the way until the end. Uh, War Maiden, I mean, I feel like she has to be on the list, guys, because... Let's face it, most guys are from the Dark Ages. They're cavemen, and they like a woman to be wearing 8-inch heels, but... For me, a woman looks best when she is just absolutely naked. She's still the only AoE guaranteed 100% decreased defense provided, you know, it's not a spirit affinity, uh, but on a three turn cooldown, right? Dagger comes close, but she still, she still has no clothes on. No clothes since day one. Uh, but, and we like it that way, stay that way. I'm just joking. She can deal some damage too, which is nice, which is nice. So she's a good champion. I'm sure a lot of people, she's farmable, right? So I'm sure a lot of people start out with her as their came or not campaign farmer, but just a uh, decreased defense option for a while in the early game, right? All right, next up is going to be, oh, there he is. There he is. It's me, Ashwalker. It's -a me, yo. Ashwalker, what's up, man? How you doing? No more. I can't take it anymore. And I'm not joking when I say Ashwalker. It's not like the stupid A's me stuff. It's really good kit, right? This A2 ability especially, we have 100% stun so we can lock somebody out and then decrease the turn meter of all enemies by 10% if the attack is critical. It's a really, really underrated control ability and I lean on Ash Walker in some of the most difficult content in the game in Doom Tower Secret Rooms on the hard cycle. An AoE with Weaken as well on a three turn cooldown. Uh, it's the weak version of Weaken but it is 100% chance of landing. So nice debuffer option there in pretty good multipliers, especially for a rare champion as well. All right, next up is going to be this guy, man. I don't get why he doesn't get more love, right? I look at some tier lists out there there and Kazard Depart isn't even in the top 10 of a lot of them. I really think, I mean, certainly top 15 in my opinion, and maybe top 10 on this champion. He has an a two AoEs both on the three turn cooldown. He's bringing decreased defense and increased accuracy. Big version of increased accuracy, uh, small version of decreased defense. So can be a pretty reliable, sometimes if you have like these nukers nowadays, you know, they're they're pretty insane, right? Genbo and Trunda, I mean, they don't need sometimes a big version of decreased defense. So if you need to increase accuracy option for your arena team, you can run Kazard Depart. You can run him in a stun set because he has two AoE attacks. Uh, he's just a really, really solid champion. Also has decreased speed or extra hit places at decreased speed for two turns if critical on the A1. Man, he's just bringing a lot to the table. I'm, I'm, I've always been a big, big fan of that champion. Next up is going to be the best campaign farmer in the game. It's Fellhound. I mean, a rare champion. It's the best campaign farmer in the game. Can also help you out in Fire Knight. He does have a two-turn reflect damage, which is definitely valuable. Uh, next up is going to be a champion, guys, that grew on me quite a bit. He's my most recent rare that I've maxed out and it was last week and it's Narahorn, right? So Narahorn is really just great champion, great champion. Uh, on the A2, provoke on all enemies, he's placing that. It's not predicated on a critical hit. Uh, also has increased defense on himself. So he's provoking everybody, but how is he gonna stay alive, right? I mean, look at that, that 936 base defense. It's not enough, Ash. Well, he's got you covered. He's got unkillable for two out of every three turns when booked. He also has defense and dungeons by 27%. It's a really good dungeon aura. Uh, just a really solid control champion who can keep himself alive with that unkillable as well. So I'm a big, big fan of Narahorn. I'm glad that I maxed him out and another champion that I actually use now. I reserve the last three spots for three starters. We're going to go really quick here. It's a made up tip. One, Elhane. Great in a stun set and great damage. Good uh, early game arena nuker, right? Uh, next is going to be Kale. N uh, no offense, Galek, you're not on the list, bro. Uh, Kale and, and Galek's not awful, but he's not top 15. Uh, poison and more poison, in my in my opinion. Uh, more poison. I mean, it's still hard to suggest that new players go with anybody but Kale, even though I'm kind of on the verge of doing that in today's video. Just because of all the poisons that he brings for clan boss in the early game and dragon and stuff like that. Uh, however, I do feel like Aethel is so incredibly good. She is right up there with Kale. A triple hitter with a big version of Weaken guaranteed. 
100% land rate on this A1, on the big version of Weaken. Amazing against bosses, right? I mean, getting a big version of Weaken in the early game is difficult to find. She's got 100% on her A1. That is just insanely good. Uh, she has an extra turn self-buffing ability, right? And what that's going to do is, it's going to, sure, give her increased attack, increased defense, but she's also going to be able to come back down and reduce the cooldown of the Divine Blade's ability, uh, depending on where it is in their cycle, right? But, but, like, overall, just a really, really solid kit, and, and dare I say, an underrated kit on uh, Aethel. Uh, very, very good champion. All right, guys, I've seen a lot of other, you know, snubs here, you know, even... Uh, Castigator is kind of a cool champion as well. So... Epic number one is going to be the Fat Man, guys. Uh, an ally attack, an epic ally attack option. Brings increased crit rate, increased crit damage. Brings HP burn uh, and two poisons as well. Uh, the cool thing about Farrakhan the Fat is when he was added to the game, he was really not the only ally attack. There's Catacomb Counselor, Lady Atessa, etc. Epic champions with ally attack. But he's by far the best. But the coolest thing about him is is if you have like one uh, legendary ally attack champion, right? You still could find yourself using Farrakhan the Fat, especially considering he is a spirit affinity, hard to find spirit affinity ally attack champions in the game. And he's just bringing a lot to the table and just beyond even just the ally attack. So I'm really a big fan that they added him to the game. Very fun in blender comps can be really fast and fun and efficient arena farming as well with this champion. So definitely, uh, in my opinion, belongs on the list. There's going to be so many snubs. There's so many good epic champions in the game, guys. We're going to go to Archmage Helmet. If you're not farming your Doom Tower uh, secret rooms on the normal track, what are you waiting for? I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Do it. New players watching this video, Go after, don't neglect Doom Tower. At least fight until you can't fight anymore and clear as many secret rooms as possible because this guy is so good. Uh, he has turn meter on the A1, on the A2, AoE stun, 75% stun on an AoE three turn cooldown with decent multipliers in terms of damage as well. It's a great controllability. It gets better. After attacking, decrease the turn meter of each enemy without a stun by 20%. So if he doesn't land it, comes right back in there decrease turn meter on an enemy who is immune to stun you can come in that may have blocked debuffs for example can reduce their turn meter instead they're not immune to that it's gonna be great wow <laughs> gonna be great increase speed increase crit rate and increase crit damage on a three turn cooldown what's more is is immune to turn meter de decreasing effects as well this guy has it all even base stats are really solid is or meh you're not really, I guess some people, if you get them and you don't have an or a speed or a lead for the arena, you can use them for that as well, right? All right, so very, very good. Uh, I have to put, I have to put contractually Allure on the list because of the A1. Psychic Whip, she's just the best or the most unique, the most special control champion in the game. Uh, three times that random decreased tar target's turn meter by 25% on each critical hit. So you can get 75% turn meter on that A1. And you can just keep going A1, A1, A1. You guys know her. You guys know her kit. I don't need to talk about her anymore. All right, next up is going to be Vogoth, guys. Vogoth is a beast of a champion. He is a beast. He can be used almost everywhere in this game. Again, Nether Spider, Eternal Dragon, Bommel, uh, uh, the Arena on Ghost Second Teams. He opened up a whole category of Ghost Second Teams for so many players. And it's all made possible by this Festering Dynamo passive. Whenever this champion is attacked, heals all allies by 50% of the damage received. That's insane. The rest of his kit's solid too, but that is just special, special ability. All right, Knight's Revenant. Ah. A couple shout outs. I love Skull Crown. Shout out. Love Thylesia. Shout out. They're right there on the list. 16 and 17, right there, guys. Uh, Retro Drop. Retro Drop, though, did make the list. She's a reviver, a great healer, a great support champion. She has perfect veil. She's got continuous heals all over the place. She's got heals, I should say, all over the place. With whenever an ally under a veil or perfect veil gets a turn, heals them by 10%. New players might not know, but perfect veil also mitigates 
AOE damage on all the champions that have it by 15%. So, you know, you have damage mitigation that can't be targeted as well, except for AOE attacks. Really solid. Great revival as well on a four-turn cooldown. Uh, good base stats. Fast champion at 109 speed. All right, next up is going to be, in my opinion, the number one epic champion in the game. Longtime viewers, you can say it with me. You know, it's Ugo. I think that Ugo is the best champion in, or the best epic champion in the game. Uh, just because, again, we talked about it earlier, but she serves multiple roles. We talked about it on Relic Tender on one champion. Decreased defense, block buffs, two of the more important debuffs to have. Also, Leech on her A1. She's got a cleanse, kind of a mini cleanse. Remove heal reduction from all allies, then another debuff from all allies, then heals all allies. So she's healing, she's taking away debuffs, she block uh, buffs, decreased defense, Leech. And then she has a breaking case of emergency revival in her kit as well. She's doing so much from one champion. Uh, an oldie legacy champion, but a goodie still, is Mausoleum Mage. Mausoleum Mage still makes the list for me, guys, because he has not been power crept at all. Zero. He's an OG in the game, and he's as good as he ever was. Decrease speed on his A1. You know, not bad. 50% chance of landing the big version for two turns. Great to have. Uh, increased crit rate, increased defense, and block debuffs for one turn on a three-turn cooldown. Two turns on increased crit rate, increased defense. Bringing a lot to the table there, right? On the A3, we get a full cleanse and then a heal. More heal depending on the amount of debuffs removed. I mean, just think about it. Odds are you're probably already somewhat familiar with this kit when watching this video. Maybe you weren't, uh, but that's a lot. <laughs> She's doing a lot. Increased debuffs. Oh, here we go again. Yeah, I could go on. You guys already know. Next up is going to be none other than Madame Seri. Madame Seris, guys, uh, she's stealing buffs on her A2. She's placing fears everywhere. Fear on her passive, shield on her passive, but really Midnight Ritual keeps her as probably the most used, I want to say. Uh, epic champion in the arena in the game. Uh, removes all buffs from all enemies. Places a decrease attack and decrease defense on all enemies for two turns. It's one of the more powerful abilities. Uh, and no champion can do can do this. Nobody, you know? The closest thing is probably Ryan the Conjurer with an AoE weaken on her A2 ability, who almost made the list as well. But Madame Suri is just an incredible champ. Uh, definitely deserves to be on the list. Next up is going to be, I'm being really corny, guys, and really dumb, and I picked a couple ties, because I couldn't decide, man. Uh, but I'm picking champions who do very similar things, right? Stagnite. Decrease attack, decrease defense, same ability, AoE, yes, please. Also, a decrease speed on his A1, and increase accuracy on his lead the pack passive. Uh, great base stats. Stagnite, he's amazing. And I tied him with Deke, right? I tied him with Deke and Armstrong because, well, Deke's amazing in his own right. He has speed in all battles by 19%. He has a leech on the A1. He has an AoE decreased defense on the A2 on a three-turn cooldown. And then he has an extra turn with turn meter fill in depletion on the same ability. That is, just makes him just a, a workhorse. He's like a motor is what I want to say. Just helping the rest of your team continue to go and deal maximum damage also by almost always being able to keep this decreased defense up vis-a-vis -vis his extra turns proc from his time compression ability. So very good. That's a tie. Uh, sticking with the ties, Godseeker and Eerie because of her revival. She also has a very unique revival. No other champion has the reset cooldown of all their skills on a revival. She has a built-in Failsafe revival on her passive, more healing on the whole team. She's increasing the duration of all buffs on enemies and increasing the duration of- Wait, you can do that? Or excuse me, decreasing on enemies, increasing on allies with a heal on the A2 ability all on a three turn cooldown. Very, very good champion. And then we have uh, a tie there with Ursula. Ursula had to make the list. She's just very, very, very dynamic. She's bringing increased defense and strengthen and the revive if you need it. Also, decrease attack and increase attack. I mean, 40% chance of decreasing the charge to turn meter by 10%. So turn meter on the A1 is nice to have as well. But man, just like really, really solid. Really solid kit. Nice to have that increase and decrease on a three-turn cooldown on one ability too, right? All right, next up is going to be 
the queen of unkillable, it's Demitha. Demitha has a, uh, not a bad Light of the Deep ability. We know her though for the A3, channel the bloodline, block damage and continuous heal on a three turn cooldown. She replaced the next guy, <laughs> Man Eater, uh, for a lot of uh, players out there, right? Man Eater is still though, probably the most used unkillable champion in the game. Uh, he has Ancient Blood, right? That's unkillable and block debuffs for two turns. We see double Man Eater. We see single Man Eater. Massive shout out. Speaking of Man Eater, massive shout out to my man uh, Seeker, who definitely could have made the list. But, uh, you know, shout out. We give him a shout out, right? Next up is going to be I'm sorry, this is the end of the, the, the two way ties, I promise. But uh, Husk, because of his enemy max HP ability, and you guessed it, Royal Guard, because of, yes, his enemy max HP ability. Depends on what affinity you need, but they're both beasts and Hydra Clan boss, and pretty much any other dungeon up to level 20, at least for all that extra damage. Uh, Husk also has a stun in his kit, so nice for CC, especially in the early and mid game. So definitely have to include these champions as well. All right, guys, we have three epics left to talk about before we move into the legendaries, so let's make it fast. The best champion, my, my, my second best uh, epic, I should say, in my opinion, is, is Seer. Uh, Carbon Burn alone has saved me so much time, and I imagine if you own Seer, it saved you so much time as well. Uh, enough said, right? Next up is going to be Geomancer, covering all the really ultra-obvious champions. Geo might be my number three uh, epic champion in the game, but really the synergy between the HP burn for three turns, and then uh, mitigate, or, or I should say, Decreasing damage by 15% and deflecting that damage back onto each enemy under an HP burn just leads him to be one of the best damage dealers in the game. He also has an AoE on his A1 ability. And the last epic, guys, is going to be... I had to... I can't... I can't... Forget the double negative. I can't not include Dark Kale on the list, guys. He has instant activation, poison, HP burn on the A1. On the A2, AoE, decrease attack. He also has, each critical hit has a 100% chance when booked of, of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. What a great ability. And then he has poison and poison sensitivity. Make it three poisons on a three turn cooldown uh, with some crit damage if they're under poison uh, mitigation by 15% on his passive. So yeah, Dark Hail is another reason to do your secret tower on uh, normal floors. All right, moving on to the legendaries, guys. Where the hell's the rest? Go ahead and let me have it, though. Go ahead and let me have it. There are so many great uh, epic champions that I could not include on the list because, you know, those are my draft choices, right? Let's go to the uh, the long-awaited legendary champions. Cardial, I finally got my hands on this champion, and boy, he has lived up uh, to all expectations, maybe even uh, exceeded them. He has an ally attack, increased crit rate, increased crit damage, and then he has the, the, the cleanse, block debuffs, revive on death that can't be removed on a three-turn cooldown. Man, oh man, oh man. What a great champion. I'm loving him. Speed and all battles by 19%. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say, I don't want to speak too soon, but he's right. He's getting close to being my, my, my favorite ally attacker in the entire game. However, he's got his, uh, he's got his work cut out for him here because Necrot the Great is number two. And he's also an ally attack champion, but he doesn't feel like the quintessential ally attack champion. He's unique and much different. He does have this ability here. This, he has two passives. This one, Arise My Minions, Block Debuff, Strengthen for three turns. Uh, the ally protect for six turns on the, uh, the ally with the lowest max HP at the start of each round. That's great because it's going to happen before anybody goes in the arena, so you can protect your weak, your nuker, essentially. So uh, you can run him and a couple other tanks. He's just a game changer. And he's just so incredibly good anywhere and everywhere in the game, right? Uh, has an ally attack, as we mentioned. Everybody who's under his block uh, debuffs is going to get that. Uh, has strengthen, block debuffs, and ally protect on a champion for three turns. Can't be removed on a three-turn cooldown. Gets an extra turn if you don't kill anybody with his A2. Uh, I could just go on and on and on clearly about Necret the Great. But yeah, he's just really what a champ what a champ all right warlord yeah i mean he has to be included orcish rituals is still one of the best abilities in the game an aoe put each target skills on cooldown and then has a 60 percent chance of fully depleting their turn meter i mean in the arena it's it's just 
What you can do with this ability is just next level. Has block debuffs, has a shield as well. As if his kit couldn't get better, it does, right? Next up is going to be none other than Yameko. Yameko is just insanely good. She's stealing turn meter on her A1. She's got a hex and she's deflecting debuffs on enemies. So she places that hex on on this A2. Uh, on the A3, Dance of Time. I mean, it's Warlord and Kaimar together in a way, right? It's three turns decrease, three turns increase on all enemies and uh, allies, uh, respectively. That's, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Just a really, really good champion. I love Yameko. All right, next up is going to be... Is this love? Valkyrie! He can't keep getting away with it! Valkyrie is uh, just a special, very special champion. She's got the AoE shield. She's got counterattack uh, on the same ability. This jealousy passive is so annoying to go against in the arena as well. Uh, turn meter increased by 10% each time an enemy champion places a buff. How the turn meters decrease each time they have that buff they receive. That's just such a great ability, guys. Uh, so Valkyrie, especially her A2, but in her high 1600 base defense or so, uh, but overall, just one of the top champions in the game. We just mentioned his name, guys. Let's talk about Prince Kaimar. Uh, definitely makes our list today. He has the Abyssal Gaze, removing all debuffs from all, or all buffs, excuse me, from all enemies, uh, then puts them to sleep. It is a game-changingly good ability, similar to Madame Saris's uh, Midnight Ritual, uh, but a lot different too, right? In the sense that it can remove all buffs, right? But we're also CCing as opposed to debuffing with decreased attack and decreased defense. Uh, but really, just a great ability for control in the arena and removing all their buffs, right? And then Seal of Magic, of course, everywhere else in the game. Also has one of the best arena auras in the game, right? But Seal of Magic is resets the cooldown of all ally skills. Fills all allies, turn meter by 20%. Just such a powerful, powerful ability inside the game. All right, next up is going to be the reward that you get for completing the game. It is Lydia, the Death Siren. Uh, this ability, Siren's Will, could be the strongest in the game. Decrease defense, decrease attack, uh, or excuse me, decrease defense and weaken. Uh, strengthen and increase speed on all allies, all on a three turn cooldown. Yes, please. She can shut somebody out with her A3. She's got the uh, denying revival attempts. So handy in the arena and many other places inside the game. Uh, just one of the best debuffers in the game, but also one of the best buffers in the game. Also just one of the best champions, to be fair, inside the game. All right, next up is going to be, I can't believe I'm including this champion with so many snubs that I'm about to hit here, guys. But really, because it's impossible. This is an impossible task. But really, guys, I think that I'm comfortable putting Helicath as on the list, top 15. He's just so good, man. He's such a good champion. Uh, Two-time hitter with Weaken on his A1. He has an AoE shield. He's got block damage for two turns on a four-turn cooldown replaced by increased defense. Makes him the best unkillable uh, champion or block damage champion certainly in the game. He's got like a Roshka, the tower, but way better kit, you know? Uh, he's got kind of the Valkyrie-esque shield on the A2 ability. He also has defense in all battles by 30%. Man, oh man, oh man. Very good champion, guys. Very good. All right. So I put him on the list. Uh, I, I was kind of going between him and Martyr, actually, on the list. The other, the third counterattack champion in the game. You know, all apologies to Skull Crown for not including you, or Skull Crusher, excuse me, for not including you on the list as well. But anyway... Duchess does make the list, right? Duchess is damage mitigation. This passive, I, I've said it before, but really decreases damage taken from AoE attacks by 25% is like a built-in strengthen, big version of strengthen or weak or version of strengthen on bosses. Just built into her kit on AoE attacks. Really nice to have. Uh, she has a great, arguably one of the best revivals in the game. The best revival in the game, I'm gonna say. Four turn cooldown. 70% HP, Veil, continuous heal on everybody. And then she has block debuffs, increased attack, perfect Veil on everybody. It's more damage mitigation, shield on the A1, speed in all battles by 19%. Yeah, Duchess, you are, you are the woman. I am 
the whole universe. All right, next up is going to be Siffy, the Lost Bride. Still makes the list. Block debuffs, increased defense, increased speed, turn meter, fill, all in the same ability. Used to be a three turn cooldown. Now it's a four. It's still an OP ability. And then we have a great revival here. Full turn meter on a four turn cooldown. Uh, one of the fastest champions in the game at 114 base speed as well. All right, next up is going to be, let's cover one of the most obvious in the game. It's Krisk, the Ageless. AoE decreased speed on the A1. AoE ally protect. Two continuous heals on himself. Increase the duration of all ally buffs. All on one ability. Also has to provoke increased speed on all allies. Increased defense on himself. And then he has the shield at the start of each turn. 50% of this champion's max HP. That's a very, very good shield, right? Uh, also places increased defense. Or excuse me, decreased defense and decreased attack. Uh, debuff on the attacker for one turn when he's hit. And he's hit a lot because he has an AoE provoke. This guy is, uh, you know, in a lot of people's mind, and I would tend to agree, the best champion inside the entire game. All right, so this is where things get really, really dicey. There's so many good Legos, but I'm going to go Lady Kimmy because I think that Lady Kimmy is one of these weird champions. Let me tell you as a Lady Kimmy owner, guys, but Lady Kimmy is like has something very special where you put her almost on any team in any area of the game for the most part and your team is just better it's performing better the win rate goes up the speed goes down the, the time it takes to goes down right so she just brings so much to the table uh she has decreasing targets turn meter on the a1 on the a2 and aoe decrease accuracy decrease speed decrease turn meter by 15 percent it's all on a three turn cooldown but it keeps getting better Remove a random buff from each enemy. Also has a 100% chance of placing a block buffs for uh, debuffs, or block buffs debuff for two turns. I can't speak today, sorry guys. Uh, on enemies who have buffs removed. Also, fills the turn meter of all allies by 15%. Places an increased accuracy and increased speed while you're at it on all allies for two turns. And then she has whenever the champion places a debuff onto an enemy, also decreases that enemy's turn meter by 5% for each debuff placed. And the same thing, uh, whenever a champion or an ally receives a debuff, fills their turn meter for each debuff received. Uh, really cool passive there to just add to an already incredibly powerful kit. I hope you guys can agree with me that Lady Kimmy belongs to be on the list, despite all the legendaries that I'm going to snub. Uh, having owned her, again, I feel confident in saying that, yeah, I would uh, I would go for it. Like, I would pick her as one of my top 15. Uh, Under Priest Brogni, I mean, I have to include a champion that's this unique, you know? Similar to Warlord, not similar at all in terms of their kit, but, like, he has an ability that's just unlike anything in the game, right? With Orcish Rituals. In this one, we have the Grow Shield ability, right? Uh... Attacks all enemies, removes a random buff from all enemies, removing a random debuff from all allies, increase the value of all shields by 30% of the damage inflicted. And then he has the synergy between that and his passive. Whenever an ally under shield is attacked, reflects 25% of that damage inflicted on the shield back to the attacker. Also healing that ally. Also brings a shield and block debuffs and increase attack to the table. It's funny, even I use him all the time, even reading his kit, I just totally spaced out that he has increased attack in his kit as well, right? He does so much that I forget. I forget what he does, right? Uh, next up is going to be only two more left, guys. One of them is a, a, a new-ish champion. It's Mithrala Lifebane. You get it from Hydra Clan Boss. Her kit is just so strong. I had to include her on the list. Uh, two times with Poison on the A1. An AoE with Hex. Hex got that buff now. A little bit extra damage everywhere you bring her. And then she has a Cleanse on a three-turn cooldown. She also has a big version of Strengthen. She also has a shield. So 30% of her max HP. And her HP scales very well. I mean, this is a very, very OP kit. She also has a chance of placing the only champion at the time of this recording who can apply Petrification debuff on the attacker for one turn. I mean, uh, if they're attacked under Hex. Same thing with the ally, 30%. I mean, this is just an insanely good kit, guys. Uh, before I get to the final champion on my list today, I do want to give a quick shout out here to a champion that deserves to be on the list. He's brand new to the game. He was added, I think, two days ago from the time of this recording. Uh, but 
I'm gonna reserve the right, but he has the three time at random with the HP burn, instant activation on a four turn cooldown. So very similar to Ninja, but he's also bringing an AoE HP burn as well. I think this guy's really, really good, uh, but honorable mention for now. Uh, the final champion is going to be, I, I snubbed every nuker pretty much on this entire video, right? Uh, so I gotta give some love to one of them. The spider killer with the instant activation HP burn and flame eruption. It's just, it's insane to see her against spider or see anybody who's lucky enough to have two or even three of her. Spider 25, it just, it melts the entire spider away in seconds. It's crazy. Uh, but furthermore, she's, for my money, probably the best damage dealer uh, in, in the game on Hydra Clan Boss, or at least she's in the conversation, right? Uh, depends, of course, on the champion surrounding her and how, how you have her built, but she's, she's just so effective at dealing a ton of damage, right? She has accuracy in all battles. She has the extra turn. So HP burn on this champion for three turns, then attacks all enemies. 100% chance of placing HP burn on all enemies for three turns on a four turn cooldown and then grants an extra turn if an HP burn is placed on all enemies. You can come right back in for opening up with her A3 to her A2. Attacks all enemies, 100% weaken for two turns. Also has a 100% chance of placing a decreased defense for two turns if there are at least two enemies under HP burn debuffs. So, I mean, she's bringing weaken and decreased defense if there's anybody under HP burn. Uh, either way, she's bringing the big version of weaken on a three turn cooldown, great. But then she's instantly activating any HP burn debuffs on the target and decreasing the duration of those HP burn debuffs blah, 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 by one turn. Man, I mean, this is just great, great champion. She also has the increased duration of HP burns with a triple hitter on her A1, guys. There it is. That's my list of the champions that I would go for. I think there's one other honorable mention I just wanted to quickly give here, guys. It's actually Nekmo Thar, guys. So Nekmo Thar is, he is so good, so good. He's brand new, so I don't want to overreact and include him on the list, but it increased speed and turn meter fill by 30% and then extra turn on his A3. On his A2, an AoE decrease speed and, and a leech on a three turn cooldown. And then an AoE decrease attack on his A1. Man, he's good. Fills his champion's turn meter by 5% each time a debuff on an enemy is removed, transferred, or expires. He's like the Energizer Bunny. He's so fast. Such a good champion. Really can't wait to play around more with him and maybe who knows, he would make my top uh, 15. Uh, Dracomorph, I love you. Shigar, I love you. Anyway, guys, I can go on and on and on here, but I will leave it at that. Uh, who did I snub? Do you agree with me? If you were starting an account, maybe you know, you're know you not going to give me 15 of each, or maybe some of you will. That's cool in the comments. But maybe some of you guys could leave me maybe your top three. out of If, if Plarium gave you that hypothetical scenario, pick three champions uh, that you want to start a brand new account with in each rarity, who would you go with? Let us know in the comments below and thumbs up other comments that you agree with thank you for watching until the very end guys you guys are the true true loyal viewers and i really appreciate each and every one of you guys honestly genuinely have a great day and as always take care guys